Round up the usual suspects. <laughs> I don't understand beanbags. Hey guys, hope you are going well. It's been a hot minute since I filmed a video. I feel like the past couple of months I've opened every video by saying it's been a while since I filmed a video, but you already know I've been traveling. I just moved across the world and so I'm still homeless, trying to search for a house, currently couch surfing and like using up all my favors with everybody I've ever met ever. <laughs> this might be a crazy idea for a video, but today I'm gonna to be talking about all the movies that I did not watch in 2018. Here's my tiny quick little disclaimer. Okay, yes, I was traveling for the past few months. Uh, I'm all out of my routine and schedule and all that kind of stuff. So I have used that as an also an excuse to not see as many movies as I usually would be seeing. As always, you know, this is just for a bit of fun and discussion. I did not not see these movies because I hate them or I'm trying to hate on them or they're crap movies. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just like I had different priorities, etc., etc. Let's just get into it. This beanbag does not like me. <sighs> First up, it is The Ant-Man and The Wasp. Now, for all intents and purposes, this is a film I should have been really excited to see. Ant-Man, which came out previously starring Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, was hilarious. I thought his comic timing was perfect. I really loved him as a character way more than I thought that I would. And the original Ant-Man movie was really good fun. So I should have been looking forward to the sequel, The Ant-Man and the Wasp. Of course, the Wasp was going to be played by, was played by Evangeline Lilly, who I think is fabulous and excited that it was called The Ant-Man and the Wasp, which felt like she was gonna get like an equal role in this. So I thought that was really cool. So this should be a movie that I was really looking forward to and I just wasn't. It was something about the trailers to start with. The trailers just weren't, doing it for me plus we just come out of avengers infinity war so that marvel movie had me like all kinds of heartbroken and feeling all types of things i just think i wasn't really into going into another marvel movie that was kind of light-hearted and i can't really i don't know i can't really explain why i wasn't really into this movie i really can't uh from what i've heard i don't think i've missed out on all that much i heard it was a pretty good sequel but that it wasn't you know anything amazing the box office also reflected that it wasn't a huge whopping success but it did okay so yeah did i miss out on anything i am not sure i guess i will be waiting to see this one uh on video on demand sometime the next movie i did not see this year which i might have usually if i was on my usual schedule but because I was traveling, I decided to not make time for it because it did not sound that interesting. And that was The Girl in the Spider's Web. Firstly, the whole girl series, I don't know what people are calling this trilogy, but you know, it started with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and the Swedish film that they remade by David Fincher, which was fantastic. I really liked that as a remake. And then there were other movies in the Swedish part of the series they redid. The girl who played with fire and I don't know, maybe some other one. I'm not sure. So this one, The Girl with the Spider's Web, they were calling it like a soft reboot sequel because they recast the main characters, Lisbeth Salanders, now being played by Claire Foy. And she looked really good in it. And the trailer just looked, you know, okay. They, they kind of turned her into a little bit of a superhero, I felt, with the trailer. They were really making her out to be this hero for women, you know, who were in violent situations, a protector of women type of heroic figure. And yeah, I'm not really sure. I've heard that Claire Foy was really great in the role as Elizabeth Salander, but this was just the kind of movie that, uh, I didn't, I didn't want or need. So yeah, did not, did not see this one. Okay, next up, I did not see A Star Is Born. I know I might be crazy because everybody was just like in love with this movie so much. And yes, I was really interested to see Lady Gaga in a main like role like this. I thought that she looked really interesting and Bradley Cooper, this was his directorial debut. But we have seen this story, you know, time and time again, and it's also not really a story that I'm 
I don't know, super drawn to the story of a rising starlet and all the difficulties that she has to face to become a star, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I will see it. I will see this movie eventually because I'm sure it's going to be popping up as we round out to Oscars season. I think we'll be seeing this movie featured a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if Bradley Cooper even gets like a, maybe a director's nomination. He'll probably get a best actor's nomination. In fact, this movie I'm sure will get a best picture nomination as well, having said that. So they're my predictions for it. And I have not even seen the movie that's based on hype and buzz alone. So I will be seeing it eventually sooner or later, but, uh, for some reason, the hype was just deafening and I just did not, did not get around to seeing it. I think I saw Venom instead that weekend. Next up, I did not see First Man, starring Brian Gosling in the Neil Armstrong Walking on the Moon biopic. Firstly, when did this movie come out? Because I blinked and I missed it. I swear, like I know I've been traveling the past few months, but I, heard nobody talk about it. I never saw any posters. I never saw it at any cinemas near where I was. So I have no idea how I blinked and missed this movie, but I did. I have heard no reviews. I've heard no feedback. I absolutely know nothing. And that's really bizarre because I do what I do and I talk about movies and I listen to all the movie podcasts and I watch so much movie news and reviews on on YouTube, so I really should have heard about this movie. Uh, I feel like people are giving it a passing grade, but nothing to write home about, which is disappointing because it's directed by Damien Chazelle, who I adore, the director of Whiplash. Then he did La La Land, which I didn't think I'd like because I'm like a musical Grinch and dislike musicals a lot, but I really enjoyed La La Land. And so yeah, First Man. Don't know anything about it. I think I saw a trailer. Not interested to see it. I would see it only for Damien Chazelle and probably for Ryan Gosling. But uh, yeah, I have no thoughts. No thoughts. Another movie I did not see in 2018 was the sequel to Creed, Creed 2. Now let me start by saying the first Creed blew my socks off. <laughs> I expected nothing. I haven't seen the entire Rocky franchise. I've seen the first one only because it's such a classic and I agree Stallone is incredible and I agree it is a classic, but you know, I don't like sporting movies and certainly I'm not really into boxing. So I was expecting zero from Creed, the first Creed, and it was incredible. Directed by Ryan Coogler, starring Michael B. Jordan. I loved it but I loved it so much and I thought the story completed so well that I was not at all interested to see a sequel. But of course it was a phenomenal breakthrough success so of course we were going to see a sequel because you know that money. Uh, I will say as well, just had a thought, Sylvester Stallone was robbed of his best actor, best supporting actor? He was robbed of his Oscar. He was like nominated for an Oscar that year for the first Creed and he didn't get it. I think he was robbed. But uh, yeah, Creed 2. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I kind of wasn't really interested in seeing the continuing progression of Apollo Creed and him going on. Yeah, I just really wasn't. But I hear that it was quite a, a good sequel. Again, it's a sequel trend. I, I also feel like when the first movie wraps everything up so well, like why do we need a sequel? Where are the original stories? But that's another rant for another day. Okay, and finally, the very last film that I did not see in 2018, which will shock all of you, is Hereditary. <laughs> The indie horror film Hereditary starring Toni Collette, which just like broke the internet when it came out in the middle of this year. And I can't, I think it was right around Sydney Film Festival at the time. So I was covering that. I was unable to see it when it first came out. By the time I was available to see it, I think like two or three weeks had passed and the internet was broken over how dividing and 
incredible some people were saying this film was and Tony Collette's performance and then the memes started coming out about it and then the ending like got spoiled and I just think the internet hype train just killed it for me it killed it I just everyone was telling me I should see it that I would be really interested in seeing this film and then I just kind of you know when like so many people are saying that I have to see it because I love it and then I was just I just, the more people told me to go see it, the less I was interested in seeing it. And then too much time passed and then I just never ever got to see it and I still have not seen it. Which I suppose is a travesty because I feel like this genre is right up my alley. Um, the writer director Ari Aster, like breakout director and the distributor is my favorite distributor of all time. It's A24 and you know, I pretty much love 90% of all the films that they put out there. They choose really amazing films. So <laughs> I should love this film. I should see it. I should have reviewed it. I just missed it at the time that it came out, like that perfect timing just didn't work out. And then the internet killed it for me. And then I've just never seen it. So there you have it guys. They are the films that I did not watch in 2018. We've still got a few more weeks left of the year. So maybe I'll rectify a few of these. Uh, but also having said that, the December, December, the December, the December release schedule is jam-packed so there is so much to see this month so I'm feeling like most of these titles that I mentioned will get pushed to the side until I get around to it next year. Guys thank you so much for joining me in the beanbag today while we talked about some of the movies I have not seen this year. Let me know in the comment section down below what movies did you miss this year at the cinema and have just not gotten around to catching yourself up on. I'd really love to know. Don't forget you can also subscribe to my channel here and keep up to date as I try and keep up to date with all things movies and TV. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. <sighs>